Well, I'm down here at the wood yard this evening, and I'm going to saw some white pine on the mill. But that's not what today's video is about. So the other day I got a phone call. I think it was on Thursday. Yeah, Thursday from my buddy Bill. And he said, hey, it's going to rain all day tomorrow. If you have some time, you should come up to Ridgeway, Pennsylvania. And I said, for what? And he said he was at the Chainsaw Carver's Rendezvous in Ridgeway. And it's a pretty good time. And I thought, you know what? Let me see if I can carve out some time and come up tomorrow. So yesterday, I got in the truck, and I was having second thoughts because it was raining the whole way up, uh, windy, cold, kind of a miserable day. But man, am I glad I went up. Had a really good time, met tons of interesting people from all over the world. And uh, the one common thing was everyone was having a good time. Like I said, the weather was miserable, uh, but they're very passionate about what they do, very friendly. They answered all my questions. Uh, I hope you enjoy the video. I did my best with the audio. Uh, it's a little difficult talking to people with, uh, you know, 50 chainsaws running at any given moment, but I think it turned out pretty good. So I hope you enjoy. All right, so where are we today, Bill? We are at Ridgeway, Pennsylvania at the Ridgeway Rendezvous, 22nd annual. Do you know how to spell rendezvous? No, and neither do you. Neither. <laughs> <laughs> Went the same school, we got it. So you're John. I'm John. And I'm, you're local, right? I'm local, uh, just next town over in St. Mary's. I'm a tree guy. I do uh, take care of a lot of the residential cutting and uh, any specialty cutting near uh, camps or, or power lines for different logging crews. I take care of them. And then on my free time, I build saws. Um, any size I prefer. I enjoy working on the steel brand. Uh, I feel like it's more of a professional saw, just how they put them together. So a lot more forward, really, uh, really like uh, pulling them apart. And I have a local machine shop, a buddy of mine, he helps me out machining uh, pistons and cylinder bases, just anything related to that. Um, tomorrow, Saturday, I, uh, we're going to be doing some racing of saws. Uh, gentleman's bringing a few hot saws down. I got this uh, 661 here. It's been what? around the block. But a it, lot of uh, people, man, it's, they're great saws though. They're... Yes. Uh, so it's got a good amount of work done to it. I usually use this one while I'm felling quite a bit. Um, and I run a three foot bar on it. A lot of my residential trees are four feet or so across. And I usually have an eight pin sprocket on it pulling a full comp chain and it doesn't skip a beat at all. Oh. And uh, I usually run 100 octane fuel in it, and and uh, got the whole Max Flow filter. I like the foam, how it seals up better. I don't like any debris getting in my motors at all. And then, uh, so then with that, let's say I took the dogs off too. It's kind of weird running a little uh, little bar after running a three footer all the time. And of course, everybody loves 500. So we got a little modified 500 down here. I don't know if anyone doing anything to a 500 yet. Yes, I, I do modify them. Um, I've done, I think, 10, 10 or 15 of them so far for different logging crews in our area. And also, you know, another 
I hate to say, you know, fuel injection's pretty awesome, but I can build a pretty mean 462. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, they, they're they right there with it, if not a little better, one of the ones I just built. I, I added a little, pushed it a little further, so to say, and they're holding together really nice. Yeah. And uh, I am working on machining a 660 piston to fit them in these as well. Man, you do it all. And so, yeah, it's... Uh, trying to do different stuff in between juggling and everything, but I mean, anything tree related and power saw just, you know, they really uh, bring a good passion out in me. And then we got all these new saws, but we'll shift gears over to the other side of the table here. Good old grandpa, 084. Oh yeah. That's a pretty, pretty mean saw. I've been uh, using this all week, uh, cutting up our logs on the landing over here for all the wood carvers. And uh, it's, it's uh, got the old noisy bark box on there, trying that out. And uh, everybody seems to love it. It just gives a good kickoff for the week up here. Yeah. It gets all the carvers in the mood and they're just loving the noise. Right. It echoes off all the buildings down here. And uh, I'm just running 24 inch bar on there with, uh, I believe I got an eight pin sprocket, maybe 10 on there. I can't remember, I got a few different sizes there. But she, uh, she runs real good. Would you mind firing that one up? All right, yeah, we can do that. I might uh, pull my ears on now here. Yeah, I'll back up a little. <laughs> buried in wood that's when it's really happy real satisfied it just it gets a good balance you get a right pressure on there and it just it's almost like finding the sweet spot in the power band like running a race bike or, right and uh that's why i noticed run a little faster sprocket on it really helped it out too and you run 880s on alaskan mill yes yes so that's what i slab these big uh maples with i got a grand bird mill and I got the 72 inch double end bar. So I run this 880 here on one end. And then, uh, well, we got our, our little joke saw down here. It's, uh, we relabeled it with that as a 170. Um, and, but it is an 880 as well. And it's got some work done to it. We can fire it up here in just a second if you'd like. And uh, runs paired with that one pretty well. And I tell you, we cut this slab here. I'll show you. It sharp, good sharp chain. Went right through a piece of pipe. Wow! Yeah, and I see. Kept going. <laughs> it ripped it. Ripped the cutter uh, too off, but it just yeah, yeah it kept going pretty good. Was yeah. this a yard tree here? Uh, yes. Yes, that was uh, the yard tree, and uh, which I can show you the other ones over there. Once, you want me to fire this up? Yeah, right over there. Yeah, let's hear that one. muffler on that uh, so I opened up the factory port and then I put a hole in the side similar to I mean I didn't feel like spending the money on a bark box so I just opened it up so it just redirected a little bit um, and just because well more or less this was a custom built for a logger and that was more or less he was just trying to keep uh, price down but I do say I mean they do make a nice 
a nice uh, muffler mod on them though. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the stainless is really nice, it gives it a nice feature. But I will fire up the 661 here, and, uh, which it does have. It's a triple port muffler, so it breathes well. Yeah. And so you cut, they bring all the logs in, you cut everything for all the carvers here yes. too? Yes, I, I cut them up and then distribute them with my machine. Just grab on them, take them, and then uh, some carvers will want them stood up too, so you gotta do a little fancy work with the grapple. And, uh, yeah, I like that grapple on there for that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. I, I got that at my local saw shop, they offered it, so. Um, but uh, yeah, it's uh, been a very handy tool for me, and I'd say, uh, I, I, I'm thankful and blessed, I'd say. I got a, yeah. yeah. What's the name of your company again? Top Side Tree Climbers. I uh, can show you a little, or on the back, my right here, we'll walk yeah. over here. And this, this is a white oak. Boy, that's a big one. This is taken down in Emporium, Pennsylvania. Emporium? Yeah. yeah. And uh, a lot of people know it for that. That movie that Denzel Washington was in. Oh, yeah, yeah. And that took place down there. And then the gentleman that made all the black powdered rifles for the Redman movie, uh, he is from a farm as well. Okay. So small little town, but there's some neat stuff going on down there. Do you ever count the rings on that one? It's uh, right between 210 and 220. We kind of lost count, and I haven't recounted them in a while. Right. So, uh, I've been meaning to sand it down more. My belt sander broke this week while I was working on that. And then I was going to put pins in uh, historic events that happened. So. Yeah, I did that once. I, I had, it's neat doing that. You know, you got Civil War, all the things. It's pretty neat to do that. Yeah. yeah. And then another part of that is right over here. There's uh, a few of the trees that I, this is the tree when it came down these two and there's that 880 again that oh the yeah and uh he said so i'm six foot six and that's a five foot bar on there <laughs> yeah. so uh real venture and then we took uh this uh eastern white pine i topped it out at 60 feet and it was still three foot across wow. so i had a 660 up there with and uh, the bar tip was just barely touching through. Yeah. And so it was a, a 60 foot top I sent out. And the uh, video camera wasn't working well that day. Yeah. But it's all good, I got a few pictures and uh, yeah, so. Very cool, man. I appreciate the time. Yeah. Thank, Thank you very much. much. All right, we have Bridget here. Where are you from, Bridget? I'm from Vancouver, Canada. And what do you, how long have you been carving? I've been carving since 2009, part time. Part time. Yeah. Okay. What's your specialty, or what do you like to do mostly? I my specialty is take on a challenge I've never done before. To be honest, I, I jump all over the map, but I'm starting to hone in and really just like be more methodical and do things on a more um, repetitive basis. So right now, I'm focusing on owls. Very nice. 
there in Vancouver, what wood do you carve mostly? Oh, I love red cedar. Red cedar. It carves like butter. It smells so good. And it's got beautiful grain and color. Okay. Yeah. Everything around here is mostly white pine. That yeah, you... I never carved white pine until I came here. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's pretty wild. Yeah. It's rich as well. So, you just told me you were on a TV show? That's right. This is exactly one year ago. Uh, they're filming up in uh, Squamish, BC, and it's the first time ever a carbon competition show. So it was called the Cut Above, and they chose 12 carvers from around the world, and every episode, one carver got eliminated. So there's actually uh, six of us here from the show. Really? Yep. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And uh, you have a website, right? I do, yeah. You ship carvings? I do, yeah. I'll put a link to your website in the description of the video. I but, uh, and I gotta hook you up with fucking Billy Ray up there. I can't, be I can't believe you're from up there and you don't know VR. I permit a lot. <laughs> <laughs> hey everybody, just wanted to let you know that we do have flags. Um, these are probably my one, number one sellers. Um, How many of these do you make a year, Barb? Oh, hundred. Really? So you're from Lithuania. Yes, yes. Basketball of Canada Plus. How long does it take to get here from Lithuania? Oh, very long. About uh, 20 hours, 24 hours. Wow. I, I, I go a lot of Vilnius, Helsinki, Helsinki, London, London football. <laughs> This is really nice here. Really nice. Yeah, it's my still. I, I, I like uh, I like uh, Norway, uh, only. Only I, 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 I don't like uh, I, 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 when I am young, I can young for us working. What's longer? Longer is born, but it's born. Right. You are 78, can talk, walk, up, 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 up. I'm better if I can stand young working for a carpenter. And now, about 10 years, I started. Very, very good. Very nice. Well, I appreciate it, man. It's nice meeting you. Thank you. All right, so who do we have here? What's your name? Jenna. Jenna. Hi. I'm Joanna Suriani. And you're Jenna's mom. Yep. And where are you guys from and what do you do? Mother daughter. I'm from Rockport, Pennsylvania, just up the road from Bridgeway here. I lived here, I grew up here. Um, but I moved back. Yeah, I'm trying to get ready to move back, but um, I got married and moved out for uh, Newcastle. Pittsburgh. That's not yeah. far from us. I'm, uh, you're a half hour from us yeah. where we live. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So how long have you been coming to this show? Or to this? I started carving five years after I had her. So, I don't know, probably 20, I think it was 20 years. 20 years, yeah. 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 And she's 22 now. And you're 22 now. This is my second year with my business at the rendezvous, but like, when she allowed me to carve, I was like 13, did a little bit on like yeah. homework and stuff, but she also carved here when we were 13. Yeah. 
And you have a YouTube channel, is that right? Yeah. What's it called? Uh, Chainsaw Jenna. Chainsaw Jenna. Yeah, it's just a fun thing that my husband and I do. We make fun videos chainsaw carving. Very cool. What's, uh, what's your favorite thing to carve or what's your specialty? Everyone has something they seem to... What's your... My specialty... Uh, I love doing military tributes. Okay. I love our veterans, so I love doing stuff like that. Very cool. How about you? Um, well, the most common thing is obviously bear, so I make a lot of those and cardinals. But my favorite piece that I did was for Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio. Oh, um, yeah. Okay, very cool. It's just different stuff. Right. Very nice. I'll put a link to your channel in the description of this video. But uh, weather's always different up here, isn't it? This yeah. time. Cold and rain this it's year. It's always bipolar. One day it's like 80 degrees, and then like the next day it's like 40. Yeah. So <laughs> you can't run from it. <laughs> but we're used to it. Well, very nice meeting you. Thank you very much. Well, thank you to you too. So what's your name and what are we doing here? Uh, my name is Jesse Coso. Uh, right now I'm just playing up with the strap. I've got uh, I've been, I've been a big carving here with an eagle. And uh, these are some bits I left over. So I'm carving a couple of trees. And so what I'm doing now is I'm burning off all the little uh, edges. And uh, then I'll take a block down into it. And I'll give it a little kind of nice finish. Very nice. Yeah. And where are you from? I'm from Canada. What part? Vancouver, Canada. Vancouver. Yeah. Came down for this. I've been wanting to come to this event for years. Yeah. It finally happened. It's, uh, it's pretty cool. Right. Yeah, you're a long way from home. Yeah. Seeing all these farmers. So, uh, where are you from? I'm from the Netherlands. From the Netherlands. How long you been carving? Uh, for 25 years now. 25 years. I started in uh, I, in, I started in ice carving in uh, 1981, uh, and then I jumped over to the wood carving in about uh, 2000, 2002. So, and I, I thought what I can do in ice, I can also do in wood. So yeah. that's, that's and I, in ice, it, 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 the wood stays longer. So. Right. So did you meet Bill here this year? Uh, as we met, uh, we met hey, the breakfast. Hey, everybody from their country goes to the pub. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and we were, we were there when he leave, when he left. We were still there. <laughs> yeah, way more experience. Than me. Yeah. Very nice. What are we making here? Uh, a woman is playing a saxophone in in the wind. So. Right. Very nice. I was just, so you, you're used to carving oak over yes. there? Yeah, we have a lot of oak. We don't carve in, in, in pine or, uh, because it's so soft. Uh, and, and the oak is, we have a lot of oak there and uh, it's much harder. You can make more details uh, if you want. Right. So stronger. Yeah, I didn't even think of that. It's neat, you know, she's into the red, or the cedar. Yeah. Up there, you got oak. We're white pine. We're white pine, yep, you got it. You got it. Yeah, right. it's like the southern yellow pine hard. But the oak is expensive here, yeah. I, I, yeah, uh, yeah. Well, they take our oak and make barrels out of it. Oh, yeah. 50 barrels, 10 yeah. barrels, that's water from western Pennsylvania. Yeah. White oak. I, I like the car, it smells better as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's oh, yeah. Well, thanks for your time, I appreciate oh, you're it. You're welcome.
So, so we got we got a whole bunch of guys here. What's your name? I'm Sam Boucher, and I'm here from Scotland. From Scotland. How about you? Ryan Villiers, I'm here from Canada. From Canada. What part of Canada? Alberta. Alberta. Mm. I'm Mike Burgess from uh, Manchester, England. From England? Yeah. I'm Peter Boucher. I'm also from Scotland because I'm Sam's dad. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> And I'm Tim Burns from Manchester, England, and I'm Mike's dad. <laughs> and you're Mike's dad. I'm trying to figure this all out now. I think I got it. <laughs> so, so you guys all been here before? Yes. I think this is my sixth or seventh time over a number of years. Yeah, I've been six or seven as well. We came in the really cold years when it used to be in February. And that was that was brutal, but it's much more pleasant now. Yeah, especially with the river right over there. It gets pretty cold and windy here, yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. And this is your first time, first right? First time for me, yeah. Enjoying every day at the moment, so... Uh, about the weather today but tomorrow might be better right right and you've been here before no, rookie first rookie time. Yeah. first time and now i talked to bridget earlier she said she was on a tv show and you're the guy that won that competition i am indeed <laughs> you're the one yeah so this is my uh, this is my first time in the rendezvous absolutely loving it and um, carving plenty of things and getting to see some of the lads and lasses i was on the tv show with right very cool yeah it's a it's a neat community that you have here and just everyone's I'm just looking around everyone helping one another anyone needs something they're there for each other and yeah. stuff really cool yeah. stuff yeah, yeah. That's cool but how do you like the states brilliant it's great and it's a shame about the weather today but it's supposed to be nice tomorrow every time I've been here in the past it's been just lovely weather the good thing about here is just seeing the trees in the last few days they're just about to start coming out for spring yeah it's here it won't be long now it won't be long well, guys, keep up the good work. It was uh, very nice meeting all of you, and uh, you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks. Cheers. Cheers, buddy. So, hey, this is one of my favorite carving. We're very patriotic. We make a million flags. But anything with American flag, anything patriotic, uh, I love to make. I love to make it. So this is probably one of my all-time favorite carving today. Right. Yeah. And it's a little, that's kind of one style, natural. This is a howling wolf. And we cut it all out, but then we dry brush it. So all this crazy paint job is dry brush. So we started out with gray, we added these browns and blacks and layers, and we did it all with a dry brush. It's a whole different style of, of detail on your car mm -hmm. versus like an all natural. Everybody, the bears, use the bears that normally with black spray paint with clear rubber top. So everybody thinks it's some kind of magic black but it's really not right it's rust all the other two x and then we put it on top of it no it did take the airbrush so you zoom in on the airbrush ring and the, that's kind of a unique the wee little details like around the the beak and the mouth and i even tuck up in all here in here uh, in all these little wings and you don't really notice it but if you didn't do it you would it hides all the little light colors it gives you deep right. depth and shadow all those kind of things now Very. here's another dry brush cross situation a little bit of dry brushing on the mouse and stuff but then this is all airbrushed in there all those little fine little details mm -hmm. that's all an airbrush very cool so that's on my late night gig is the airbrush right, right. <laughs> so i give you a general idea this is like the most popular animal at ridgeway this year everybody and their brothers got cardinals of all the same size uh, the cardinals are probably the most popular small item Right. Right. Uh, these are some of the common tools that we use specifically for our carving business. This is an eye tool. I think it's made by Mampus. Uh, this comes in multiple sizes, and that's what we make the eyes out of. Okay. And I also kind of do the little claws with them. I can kind of show you that. This is Barb's number one tool, so I'll let her talk. I love this tool. This is Arbor Tech makes this. It's a gouge. And this allows me to get my wonky edges on my flags and all of my signs. So I love this tool. And then this guy, just like a burr bit, okay? And to save money, uh, I just put this on like a drywall tool. And actually, you don't need a uh, fancy, and it's, it's self locks and you can change the bits out or whatever. It's a little more grindy, but it's, you know, use this for hogging off big stuff. Uh, making little bear paws, things like that. A um, little bigger eye tool this time, you know, same company. Uh, go ahead, you can do this one. These are just your average Dremels, Dremel tools. These are saber tooth bits. They come in um, different sizes, different shank sizes, different grades, coarse, medium, 
um, pointy. You, yeah. you know, so there's a lot of variety in these tools that you can purchase. Yeah, and we probably use a flame bit equally as much as this one. And flame bit's just a pointy points and tapers back. Um, you want to explain this one because you ordered this bit for me. I, I, I use it for detail on my eagle's face and eyes, and I can show you that. But you remember, you ordered it from Amazon. Yeah, this is just an Amazon tool. We're always trying to look for something that is small enough to get in some of the little nooks and crevices um, to try to clean out little areas that, like, sandpaper or our sanding tools can't get to. I do, um, I do trace, like, around a bear's mouth on my... Um, flat carvings just so when I come up to it with my saw I know where to kind of stop and it yeah, gives, gives her me a, a stop stopping point, point yeah. for and that. I, yeah, and I, and I can show you where you're doing it. So you just you see how this is kind of pointy on the end where the other one kind of makes fuzzies and it's a big gouge. This you can draw really tight and really light and that's why I cut that beaks little angles in their mouth and a little crease in their, their lips and so forth, you know. And then you can do this when this is your Oh, this bowl. is just your average plumber's uh, torch. <laughs> <laughs> but we burn everything. So after it's carved, it leaves a little fuzz on it. So I tell everybody, it's like toasting a marshmallow. You don't want it too dark, but you don't want it too light. So then it just kind of takes all the little fuzz off of the carvings. And then this tool here is um, a, a finger sander. So it's the size of your finger. Um, it does adjust to different angles. Um, and this also allows me to get into some smaller areas just to get that little finishing touch to get it um, nice and flat. And these are kind of like, I can even like texture, like on my eagle's eyebrows, I'll make it look like a part of a little fine feather, but that white pine so soft and you're dealing with white pine now. Um, you'll see you can kind of gouge that in there. It makes nice pretty marks, you know. Same thing with his feet. And then this is just a, a sander. And I like using the impact guns because they're not jerking your hand like a wrist, you, you know. Uh, they're jerking your wrist like a drill would do, you know. And, and this comes in different grits and it basically sands that off a little smoother than that. So those are like the basic tools that we use on a daily basis. But anyway, that's it for today's video. Appreciate y'all being here and I will catch you on the next one.